The 20th century was the golden age for firearms design. In 100 years, the world witnessed the evolutionary leap from handmade, single shot and repeating rifles made of wood and steel to the advent of the machine gun, and then finally what we now consider modern firearms made of composites, polymers, and with the ease of use and reliability becoming paramount. But one type of firearm was seemingly left behind while other designs evolved by leaps and bounds, the submachine gun. After World War II and at the dawn of the Cold War, a new age of warfare had begun which threatened to leave the submachine gun behind. Body armor was beginning to be issued by nearly all major armies around the globe, and the traditional pistol caliber that submachine guns were chambered in lacked the penetrating power to reliably defeat targets. This, however, didn't completely stop gun makers around the world from submitting new designs. During the Cold War and in the late 90s and early 2000s, New designs would pop up here and there promising to optimize the typically crude designs that submachine guns typically featured. During World War II, most submachine guns were typically just steel pipes fitted with a bolt, barrel, trigger, and stock, and not much else. But with the rise of the MP5 and UMP, although the operating principles were mainly the same, they became much more refined and more user-friendly. Then, to defeat body armor, designs like the P90 began to become successful. But still, these firearms operated on roughly the same principles as their predecessors. Typically, they operate on a simple recoil-operated blowback mechanism, or sometimes operated via a gas piston. Then, in 2007, a company by the name of TDI, or Transformational Defense Industries, announced a new submachine gun that would disrupt what everyone thought a submachine gun should be. This would become the Chris Vector. The Vector separates itself from other submachine gun designs in many ways, but just looking at it for the first time you immediately understand that you are not dealing with a traditional firearms design. Its silhouette resembles something from Star Wars or Halo. The front of the gun is huge and blocky and extends to the base of the pistol grip, whereas most submachine guns are tubular and relatively sleek. The rear of the gun then terminates into a rather simple folding stock that lacks any kind of weight adding frills such as storage for batteries or additional gadgets and the unconventional body of the Vector is not for looks, as all of that mass in the core of the gun houses its most unique feature, which is its Super V recoil system. Traditionally, nearly all firearms from bolt actions to machine guns follow one basic principle. They have a bolt that travels to the rear when unlocking and ejecting cartridges, and then the bolt moves forward to pick up a fresh round and seat it in the chamber. In the case of guns that shoot very powerful rounds or machine guns that fire at very high rates, much of the recoil that the user feels in their shoulder is actually from the bolt slamming to the rear of the receiver at high speed. Rather than create yet another design that operates on this principle, TDI began the design of the Vector asking themselves, how can we reduce the reciprocating mass of the bolt? Or better yet, how can we use the recoil energy to our advantage? The innovation in the Vector is actually rather simple. Rather than a bolt which travels rearward, towards the shooter's shoulder, the bolt follows a guide or track within the receiver so that after firing, the bolt travels downward. This downward force then counteracts the muzzle from rising, therefore reducing recoil significantly. Eventually TDI became the company we all know as Chris USA, and the Vector was put into production and then finally displayed and offered to be test fired at the famous SHOT Show in Las Vegas in 2011. Immediately, the Vector was a huge success, and the company offered both military and law enforcement models in full automatic, originally specced at 1500 rounds per minute, but then scaled back to a still blistering 1200 rounds per minute. For American civilian sales, both carbine models with 16 inch barrels as well as short barreled rifle models with 5.5 or 6.5 inch barrels were offered. But one more feature of the Vector helped to thrust it into the spotlight of firearms enthusiasts as well as those looking to use it in the line of duty, which was the caliber it was chambered in when it made its debut. Ever since World War II, 9mm was by far the choice of caliber for almost all submachine guns. Not only is it effective in large quantities when fired at high rates, but since most SMG designs incorporate straight blowback or roller delayed blowback designs, the 9mm choice was also critical to keep recoil to a minimum. The Vector, however, came onto the scene originally only offered in God's caliber, the 45 ACP. This choice of caliber, along with its unique recoil reducing operation, had gun lovers as well as professionals reaching into their wallets and scrambling to purchase one for themselves. And the cherry on top? The Vector uses Glock magazines, rather than an expensive proprietary magazine. Eventually, Chris would go on to optimize their design, as well as fix some minor flaws and release a Gen 2 model, along with additional caliber choices, such as 9mm and several others, with even a 22 long rifle version being planned. The Chris Vector is a relatively new addition to Escape from Tarkov. 
and just like pretty much all of their other gun models, the Vector is modeled and rendered to be nearly identical to the real-life weapon. Having been a Vector owner myself, I've studied Tarkov's Vector with a scrutinizing eye and I can't seem to find any flaw in how the gun has been represented. What stands out to me in the weapons of Tarkov is the superb attention to detail, or the small things that many other game developers miss. The Vector in real life has two selectors, one for turning the safety on and off, and the other to change the fire mode, and Tarkov's Vector has this as well. The real vectors I've used don't have as crisp of a clicking sound when manipulating these levers like they do in Tarkov, but that might be something that varies on an individual basis. Magazine changes, chamber checks, and all other function checks look and sound exactly as they should. I do have one thing to note though when it comes to compatibility. The 50 round Glock drums used in the 9mm variant in Tarkov appear to be the brand KCI. These are great drums and they work well, but in every 9mm vector I've ever used, these drums will work but they fit extremely tight and sometimes the bolt needs to be locked open to insert the drum. Obviously, animating your PMC fiddling around with his gun just to get the magazine inserted isn't realistic from a gameplay perspective, but I don't think someone would use this brand of drum magazine if their life depended on the gun working efficiently. But in all, I give the Vector in Tarkov a 10 out of 10 for modeling, animations, and sound design. Let's get on to using it in Tarkov. Before heading out with your Vector, first you'll need to decide which version you want to use, the 9mm or the 45 ACP option. The best in class ammo choices here to consider are the 7N31 for 9mm or the 45 AP, but the choices don't stop there. By going with the 9mm option, you can also use the 50 round drums that I mentioned earlier, which will definitely come in handy with such a high fire rate gun. The 45 option is limited to 30 round magazines, so at this point you might think the 9mm is the obvious choice, but there is one more deciding factor. The 45 5 Vector has a higher fire rate coming in at 1100 rounds per minute, whereas the 9mm is only 950 rounds per minute. I know I say only 950 like it's nothing, but keep in mind that both these guns fire extremely fast, and that rate of fire is what makes the Vector so lethal in Tarkov. Combined with its excellent handling and flat recoil, the time to kill is extremely fast when using the proper ammunition. The Vector can also be very reliable when using flush damaging rounds and going for the legs if you want to bypass the enemy's armor completely. Outfitting the Vector doesn't really take much, and in all honesty, you can run almost any setup you choose. I take I typically like to equip the Osprey Suppressor to reduce my noise signature, as well as cut down on distracting muzzle flashes, a laser of any type to increase hip fire accuracy, and any front grip or red dot I feel like running. One of my favorites being the Vortex UH-1. Vectors have quite low recoil to begin with, but unlike most guns where the vertical recoil is the most important, you're actually going to be wanting to lower your horizontal recoil with the Chris and this is especially true for the 45 ACP version. While manageable, the horizontal recoil on the Vector can get a little jumpy, making sprays at medium range less effective, so if you have the rubles to spare, you can try outfitting the Vector with better stocks. The best option being the Magpul PRS, if reducing recoil is what you're after. But I find that the Vector excels at the very thing it was designed to do in real life, unloading massive amounts of rounds on target at close range, so I keep my ergonomics high. Chris USA plans to expand their Super V recoil system into new types of firearms, including 12 gauge shotguns in the future. And in an age of firearms design where innovation seems to be limited to cosmetic features and enhancing modularity, it's refreshing to see gun designers looking to improve their core operating components and pushing the boundaries of what physics will allow in a firearm. The Chris has also revitalized the submachine gun market as private militaries, police forces, and security details can now be seen carrying the Vector. Perhaps the Vector is a glimpse into the future of what tomorrow's gun designs will look and function like. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Gun Factor. Having been a Vector owner myself, I've spent a lot of time with this gun, and it was exciting to see it added to Tarkov. I can't wait until the FN Scar is added, and as some of you know who tune into my Twitch stream, that gun in particular is very special to me and I'll be making a Gun Factor episode on that one as soon as it comes out. I love making these types of videos as it's a perfect blend of my interest in gaming, my past career and current interest in firearms, and the creative expression of video making. To all those who have subscribed to support the channel, I can't thank you guys enough. I'll have new videos out soon, but until then, I'm Jeff with EUL Gaming. Good luck out there.